Now we're looking at some motion involving trig functions. x equals 5 minus 3 sine 2t is the equation of a particle's displacement from O, where x is in metres, t is in seconds. Our first part, we're asked to find the initial displacement. In part two, when and where does the particle first come to rest? And the third part, find for t in the range where t is between 0 and 2 pi, the values of t for which the object's acceleration is equal to 0. Well, solving part 1 initially, we're asked to find the initial displacement. Now, remember what the word initial means? It means when time equals 0. So we're going to choose when time equals 0, we're going to substitute it into the equation of the, of the displacement. We get that x equals to 5 minus 3 sine of 0. And that simplifies to be 5. So x equals 5 metres is the initial displacement. Part 2. When and where does the particle first come to rest? Well, there's two parts of this, when and where. Well, we'll write down our, our equation of the displacement. Now, we need to work out the velocity because it, it talks about coming to rest. Now, if it comes to rest, that means the velocity will be zero. So our velocity equation is the derivative. The derivative of five is nothing. The derivative of minus three sine two sine two t works out to be minus 6 cos 2t. So there's our velocity equation and it's a good idea to just highlight any equation we've worked out. So we've got our initial x, x equation then our velocity equation. So we'll just highlight them because quite often through the question you'll need to, to come back to them. So if you've highlighted them they're easy to find. Now the particle comes to rest when the velocity of course is 0. In other words when minus 6 cos 2t equals zero. So this is a trig equation. So we need to uh, divide firstly by the minus six and to get the 2t by itself we're going to use the shift cos technique. We get rid of the cos by shift cos. There's our, our circle. When we do the shift cos we'll find that we get an answer of 90 degrees. So in other words 2t is equal to pi on two because we always work in radians. Now, if you recall, if you do get an answer that's right on the boundary, in this case it was 90 degrees, what we need to do then is to check the opposite angle. Now, the directly opposite would be 270 degrees, so if we try to find the cos of 270, cos of 270, it also equals zero, so yes, that is a valid answer as well. So 3 pi on 2 is the way of uh, writing 270 degrees in radian measure. And that's going to continue. So, at the moment, 2t equals pi on 2, then 3 pi on 2, and that would continue. That's 2t, so to find t, we need to divide by 2. And if we do that, dividing both of those by 2, that's what we get. But the question says, when does the, the particle first come to rest? So we're interested in the first time we get. So the particle first comes to rest when t equals pi on 4. Now, it also asks where does the particle first come to rest? Well the where talks about the displacement, where it is. So we say well when t equals pi on 4 x is equal to 5 minus 3 multiplied by the sine of 2 times pi on 4 and that will simplify it to be 2. So x equals 2 meters from the origin. Excellent. Well at this stage now we, we're running out of a bit of room so there's our two equations. We'll just uh, jot them down over there and then we can clear the screen. Question 3 now we're asked to find the values of t for where the acceleration equals 0. Well the acceleration is the second derivative so we look at our velocity that's the first derivative so if we find the derivative of that we get equals to 12 sine of 2t. Now we want the acceleration to equal 0 so setting that equal to 0 we get 12 sine 2t equals 0. We could divide by 12 and therefore get that sine of 2t equals 0. Now we want the 2t by itself so go get rid of that sine so we go shift sine and again using our diagram we'll get 0 degrees as our, as our first answer and since we do get that therefore 2t equals 0 we need then to check on our diagram opposite 0 is 180. 
and check the sine of 180, it will also equal 0, so that would be a valid answer. We write that as pi. Also, 0 degrees is the same as 360 degrees, isn't it? So that's 2 pi. And that will continue, 0, pi, 2 pi, that pattern would continue, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, etc, etc. Now let's see, to solve this, a couple of steps now, that's what 2t is. So to find t, we need to divide everything by 2. So we do that, we get t equals 0, pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, 2 pi, 5 pi on 2, continue, continue. We are, though, restricted by this range. We're asked just to find for t in the range that t lies between 0 and 2 pi. So of our solutions at the moment, that would be greater than 2 pi, so we're going to disregard that. So therefore, t equals 0, pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, and 2 pi. They are the solutions in the range 0 less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 2 pi. Excellent. Well, that concludes our first example there. We will look at another example now. The acceleration, a metres per second squared, of a particle is given by the formula. a equals 18 cos 3t. Now the particle is initially at the origin and the velocity is 3 metres per second. We're asked to find expressions for the velocity and the displacement. In part 2 we're asked to find the maximum distance that the particle is from the origin during the first 4 seconds. Well, let's solve it now. We're given initially that a, well, well, not initially, but starting off that a equals 18 cos 3t. So we're starting off from there. We're asked to find the velocity. Well, if we're given the acceleration and we need to find the velocity, we're going to integrate. So integrating, we get the velocity equals, and the integral of that will be 18 on 3 sine of 3t. Very important that we add our constant of integration. And our next step is actually to find the constant. So we can, that can simplify where we've just replaced the 18 on 3 with a 6. Now to find this constant, we look at our conditions. It says initially the velocity was 3. In other words, when time equals 0, v equals 3. And if we substitute that into the equation there, we get that 3 equals 6 multiplied by the sine of 0 plus c, Therefore, 3 equals, and the 6 sine 0 is actually nothing. So we've just got c then. So there we have. We've got c is equal to 3, and we work it back into this equation, our velocity equation, to come up with that. Very good. At this stage, we'll highlight what, we, what we've got. As before, it's a good idea, once we've got our acceleration or velocity or displacement equations, we'll highlight them because quite often we'll need them later on in the question. We're also asked to find the expression for the displacement x. So we need to integrate our velocity equation, and we do that, x equals the integral of that, 6 on 3 cos 3t, three the negative. Now that will simplify, the plus 3, the integral of that will be 3t, and what do we need to write in the end? Of course, our constant of integration. So that just simplifies to be this, where we've replaced the minus 6 on 3 with negative 2. Now our next step, again, we need to find that constant of integration. So we look back. It says that it's initially at the origin. The initially, it's at the origin. So in other words, when t is naught, x is naught. And substituting those values into the equation, we come up with Plenty of noughts, plenty of noughts. However, with that, there's a cos of zero, so we just can't assume that's zero. We have zero on the left. Minus two times cos of zero, you'll find is minus two. So be very careful with that. And then we have c on the end. So therefore, solving that, we get c is equal to two. So once we find c, we put it back into our equation. So we get our, our final displacement equation as x equals minus 2 cos 3t plus 3t plus 2. Again, we highlight that because we'll most probably need to use it in part 2. Very good. 
so uh, there's our velocity and our displacement we've just found that we're running out a bit of room so we'll just write that to the left there we'll wipe the screen and then we'll look at question two we're asked to find the maximum distance now when we start talking about maximums generally we should be thinking about the derivative so the derivative of the distance will be dx dt so the maximum distance will occur when the derivative is equal to zero but dx dt in fact is the velocity so in other words we're saying the velocity is equal to zero there's our velocity equation so we set that equal to zero and then we need to solve that equation so we'll take the three over it becomes minus three we divide both sides by the six so we get sine three t is equal to minus a half and this is a, a, a trig equation we need to solve it so we use our, uh, our circle there sine is negative so if sine is negative we're dealing with the third and fourth quadrants so we just put the half on the calculator we press the shift sign and we come up with 30 degrees so we mark 30 degrees in each of the quadrants now our, our angle 3t is equal to well the first one that'd be 180 plus 30 that'd be 210 degrees the next angle would be almost the full circle so 360 but back 30 degrees would be 330 now that's what the first revolution is but the 3t indicates okay there's a few revolutions in fact they should be looking at three revolutions so there's our first revolution done we look at the next revolution working our way around we'd come up with 570 degrees we keep on going we would now get 690 degrees now this continues so at this stage our answers in degrees but of course we need to be working in radians so we'll just convert those all to radians and that's what 3t equals so to find t by itself divide everything by 3 very good. Now at this stage, let's let's uh, remember what the question is asking. Find the maximum distance that the particle is from the origin during the first four seconds. Well, we're going to solve this by way of a little diagram. So we're trying to find the distance. So we're plotting the distance against the time. We're using these various values of time because that's going to uh, that's going we're going to see that it's going to give us maximum distances, but also minimum distances as well so we mark them in on our time axes and it's just a matter of carefully substituting into that equation firstly our va value of t 7 pi on 18 if we substitute that in 7.39 mark that in on the diagram there when we sub in 11 pi on 18 into the equation there we come up with 6.02 so we'll mark that coordinate in on the diagram moving on 19 pi over 18 we substitute that into the equation remember we should be working in radians we come up with 13.63 we'll mark that point on the diagram then 23 pi on 18 we sub it in and we get 12.3 now at this stage do we need to go any further well at this stage there's our curve that's what the curve looks like and it did ask us it says during the first four seconds during the first four seconds well on our time axis the four second mark is just before 23 times pi over 18 so that's that's indicates we have drawn the graph for the first four seconds and certainly the high point there would be the maximum distance so the maximum distance occurs when t equals 19 pi over 18 so we'll write that down and to find our exact answer we're going to substitute that into our x equation so we get the maximum distance therefore equals minus 2 times the cos of 3 times 19 pi on 18 plus 3 times 19 pi on 18 plus 2 now that will simplify to be that well you'll need to check this later on the calculator that the, the cos of that ends up being the negative square root of 3 on 2 so finally okay and that just simplifies to be that so finally we get that root 3 plus 19 pi on 6 plus 2 that is all in meters